not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex. That's in the northeast of London, in England, in the United Kingdom, in Europe, on planet Earth. Um, I'm here to bring the Word of God to you, to inspire you, to challenge you. And today I want to answer a question that I've been asked recently by one of our viewers. Is that okay if we have a little bit of a question and answer time? And the viewer wrote me an email uh, just a while back and they said basically, why is it not working for me? Why is it not working? Why have I not got victory in this certain area? And they didn't really explain what the area was, but they said, I'm praying all the time, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And they gave a list of what they were doing. And, um, you know, I prayed about it and actually fasted for a day to try and get an answer. And what the Lord showed me was that person was undoing all their good with their words. You know, James actually writes about people like that. And he says, there are people who, if they do not control their tongue, their religion is worthless. That's what James 1 says. If you don't control your tongue, your religion is worthless. I really feel, with all the teaching out there, with all that's going on, I still feel that so many Christians do not realize how powerful their tongue is, how powerful their words are. They still really don't know that what frames their life, what shapes their future, what's going to get them to where they're going is what they say. And you can change what you say and declare things. And you, you see, somebody said to me, oh man, your church is always saying stuff. You come into Tree of Life, you come into Tree of Life service, before we finish the first, before we start the second song, we're saying stuff. We're saying how good God is. We're saying about our blessings. We're saying about who we are in Christ. Whenever we receive an offering at Tree of Life, we speak over that offering. We speak over that harvest because I find that finances is one of the areas where we really need to learn to say stuff. And I really think it's important that we learn how to speak and we learn how to take control of words because words transmit power. I'll say that again for you. Words transmit power. Whenever you speak, you're transmitting power. It might be life. It might be death. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. So you have to choose what you say. You can speak life and have life, or you can speak death and have death. You've got to learn about controlling your words. If you read Mark 11, I know a lot of us have studied these verses about how to pray and how to make declarations, but I just want to point out something to you. Mark 11, 23, okay, I'm reading it in the King James. For verily I say, say, for verily I say unto you that whosoever, that's you, shall say, say, to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes the things that he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says, okay? The word believe is in Mark 11, 23, one time. One time is told, we've got to believe. You've got to believe. What do you have to believe? You have to believe what you say. But what we have four times is saying, Jesus says to us that you say to the mountain, and that if you believe in what you say, you will have what you say. <sighs> I don't know how Jesus, in that verse, could have emphasized how important what we say is more than he did. You have to believe what you say, and if you believe what you say, you can say to the mountain, move, you will have what you say. And Jesus said it to us. So Jesus, who can have what he says, said to us that we can have what we say, and if he can have what he says, and what he says that we can have what we say, then we're going to have what we say. You and I are going to have what you say. So we need to start saying some good things. We need to start getting our words in order. We need to start speaking life. You know, in the book of Genesis, right at the beginning there, in the book of Genesis, that the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. Man, they were having a charismatic church service on day one on planet Earth. The Spirit of God was there all over them, hovering all over the planet. Man, but it was still dark. It was still dark. Nobody had a clue. Nobody could see anything, but the Spirit was all there. Man, that describes a lot of charismatic churches. It was still dark until what? Words were spoken. 
Let there be light. I know a lot of Christians. I know a lot of church services where the Spirit of God is moving, but everyone stays in darkness. No one, nothing changes. Nothing gets lit up. Nothing gets changed. Nobody gets healed. Everyone leaves, for swinging on the chandeliers, and they leave the same as they came in because nobody spoke. I even know church services near us where they say, we don't even have a sermon anymore. We don't have the Word. If you don't have the Word, then nothing changes. You're in the dark all the time. You need the Word of God. When God spoke, when the Word of God came forth, let there be light, there was light. Your words have the power to change darkness into light. Your words have the power to bring life or bring death, to speak life. Learn to control your words. People still say, don't they, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never, no, no, words will kill you. Words will absolutely kill you. Proverbs 11 and verse 3 says, I've got it written down here, a crooked tongue, a perverse tongue, that's a tongue that speaks opposite to the truth. It says it will destroy you. When you start speaking lies, you'll destroy yourself. When you say, I can't, when God says you can, you're lying and you'll destroy yourself. When you say, I can't make it, and God says, I'll supply all your needs. When you say, I'm so sick and so beaten, and God says, by my stripes you're healed, you're speaking against the word. You're speaking against what God says. No, I want you, I want every one of you, the reason you're watching my show today, it's not by accident, it's because God has assigned you to be here today because God wants you to move mountains. There are mountains in your way and God wants you to learn how to speak to them and get and how to do it. You're going to have to get your speech right. You can't say, mountain, move in the name of Jesus and then go, I bet it won't. I just bet it won't. I bet there's no way. No, you need to develop a consistency that you believe what you say and you have what you say because death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's Proverbs 18, 21. That's the word of God. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So speak life. You have to conceive words, okay? You have to think of the words and then when your tongue makes that word and you speak it, it has power. It has power to kill. It has power to bring life. That's the power that you have in your tongue. And if you speak God words and quote God, it'll bring the power of God into that situation. I've seen that so many times. I suppose you're healed, you're blessed, you're favored, and watch it manifest. But you can also speak, you can agree with Satan. You can speak Satan's words. Oh, they can't do it, you can't do it. Satan loves to pressure you. Satan loves to put pressure on your soul whisper lies to you and pressure until you say it. But if you don't repeat what Satan says, his words don't have power. Death and life are not in Satan's tongue. His tongue does not have that power. He's just a fallen angel. He's just a wannabe, washed up loser. You are a human being made in the image and likeness of God with dominion on this earth. So it doesn't matter what he says. What matters is what you say. So if you ignore what he says and say what God says, you'll have what God says. But if you listen to Satan and say what Satan says, you'll have what Satan says because you have what you say. So if you say what God says, you'll have what God says. And if you say what Satan says, you'll have what Satan says. Because you have what you say. So why don't you say what God says? Why don't you say truth? Why don't you say life? Why don't you say victory? Now, whenever I speak on this, I get criticized for this. But this is basic truth on how to win in life. This is basic truth on how to walk in victory. Take a scripture that you all know, okay? Let's take Philippians 4 verse 13. You all know it. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, okay? Where's that? It's in the Bible. It's in the book of Philippians. You know what that means? That means it's spirit and life, isn't it? The whole Bible is spirit and life. But do you know, the closed Bible, I talked about this the other day when I'm getting your hopes up. Water in the glass doesn't change your life. Water that's drunk will change your life. Verses in the Bible won't change your life. You've got to read it. You've got to meditate on it. And you've got to speak it. You are a transformer. You take the spirit word of God and you speak it. And that transforms it now into real power that can change this world. Real power that can change things in the physical realm. And it turns it into power that can move mountains. Power that can wither trees. Power that can make cancers die. Power that puts money in the bank. Power that puts a car in your driveway. Power that promotes you to a new job. Power, okay? So you read it, you think about it, you agree with the Word of God, you bow your ear to the Word of God, and you start speaking truth. You know, be like Jesus. John 12, verse 50, one of my favorite verses. John 12, verse 50. Whatever the Father says to me, that's what I say. Jesus didn't say anything he wanted. He said what God wanted, and he got those results. He healed them all 12 times in his life. Everybody in the room got healed. He raised the dead several times. John said that you couldn't write enough to, to record all the things. There's not enough books in the world to write everything Jesus did in his life. Why? Because he said what the Father said. And Satan will come against you, trying to get you to say what he said, trying to get you to have a big tantrum, trying to get you to become a big sulker, trying to get you to leave your church. Well, I'm never going back to that church again. Blah, 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 blah. And that's what Satan wants you to say. Satan wants you to try and take something that's not yours. 
And you'd be like Jesus when that happens. You'd be like Jesus when Satan comes out and you go, it's written. I'm going to say some God's words. I want to see some God's word happen. You need to speak faith. You need to speak words of faith. You need to speak words. And when you speak words and you believe those words that you say, then you will have what you say, okay? You need to do that. And if you don't do that, the Bible says, if you don't control your tongue, James 1, 26, if you don't control your tongue, you deceive your own heart. You deceive yourself. The most deceived people in the world are not people from other religions. They're Christians who don't control their mouth. They don't control what they say. You have to talk what God's word. You say, I am more than a conqueror. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. You need to become your best cheerleader. Some of you are your own worst critic. And you need to stop that right now and start being your cheer. Start speaking like, because you're going to have what you say. So start saying, I'm smart. Start saying, I'm smart, I'm kind, I'm loving, I'm a great pastor, my church is growing, my TV ministry is growing, I'm a great husband, my marriage is getting better every day, my family is getting healthier every day. Your tongue speaks words, and they start feeding life, they start changing things. So stop saying what you think is happening and start saying what God says about it. Well, I'm just so tough and it's so weak and I can't do it and I can't manage, I don't know what to do. No, don't say that, say, I have the mind of Christ and I'm going to walk in victory. And that, this is the answer to this person's email. But I guarantee the number one reason why most people do not have things in their life is because they don't check their tongue. And if you don't bridle your tongue, your religion is useless. You know, what does Mark say? Mark 4, verse 14. It says, the sower, the sower sows the word. We have to put the word out there. The word of God, this Bible is incorruptible seed. But you know, you can put seeds in a packet and they won't change. Nothing happens to those seeds until you put the seeds in the ground. They found packets of seeds in pyramids, four, five thousand years old packets of seeds. They've never budded, they've never sprouted, but as soon as they took those five thousand year old seeds and put them in the ground, suddenly there's a harvest. This is the word of God. It's been around for two thousand years, some bits of it even more, three, four thousand years. It's been around for thousands of years but it has no power. It's still just the same until you take it and plant it in your life, plant it in your mind, plant it in your heart, and then it starts to blossom. Then it starts to grow. Then your life starts to change. Then you start to get somewhere. Then you start to be something. Then things start to change. Then healings start to happen, and then miracles start to happen, and my phone has locked me out, and I can't read the next line of my notes. Hold on, in the name of Jesus, there we go. Whether a seed grows and whether you get fruit, depends on what you do with the seed. If you leave the seed here and just leave that by the side, you don't get the fruit. If you read it, if you believe it, if you speak it, the farmer does not get the seeds in his barn. He gets the seeds that he sows to harvest. The seeds in the barn don't bring him his harvest. The seeds he sows gets the harvest. If he sows tomatoes, he gets tomatoes. If he sows cotton, he gets cotton. If he sows radishes, he gets radishes. And you understand that, he gets what he sows. But it's the same, the word is the seed. What you say is the seed. You don't get the Bible in your life. You get the Bible you say. You get the Bible you speak in your life. So start speaking the good bits. Start speaking what you want to see. If you keep speaking death and failure, that's a big deal because that's what you're going to get. If you do not control your tongue, your religion is worthless. All you're praying, all you're going to church, you sitting here watching me on TV, all of the religious God Squad stuff that you do so faithfully and so beautifully are for nothing if you keep speaking death and failure over yourself. That's why it's not working for you. So speak right, go to bed, wake up, and have the harvest. That's a better way to live. That's a better way to do life, okay? Mark 4, 27 says, when you sow the word, when you sow a seed, you don't know how it grows. Have you noticed that? You, you don't know how that tiny little seed becomes a carrot. You've no idea how that happens. How that little apple seed becomes an apple tree that has more apples on it. Where seed, you don't, where's it getting the size? Where's it getting the mass? Where's it getting the energy? Where's it getting the life? What about, you don't know what all of that process is. And you can tell me, you know, your GCSE biology stuff, what it's some line, it's this and that. You don't know how it works. It's, 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 it's almost magic to us. You don't know, you've no idea the power in that seed. But you can go to bed and it'll grow. You can just leave it alone once you've spoken the words. Now, I'm not saying, listen to me now, listen, listen. Don't go around and say, I'm saying go and be lazy, okay? Don't quit your job and go, I'm living by faith now. I've seen too many people do that and it never ends well, okay? Living by faith is not living by being lazy. 
okay? You should be working. You should be doing the religious stuff. You should be praying. You should be reading your Bible. You should be doing all that. But when you speak good words, then all those things are no longer meaningless. They're no longer in vain. They start to produce. Your speaking right makes everything else work right. Your prayers work right. And you're reading the word works right. Everything works right. You start to understand things. You start to grow. Listen, no matter what you're facing, say what God says. Say what the Bible says about your situation. You might have all the sicknesses in the world. Say this, by his stripes I'm healed. You might have tens of thousands of pounds of debts. You might be called to do something you could never do because you just don't have the stuff to do it by God. You know, you say, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You might be facing a thousand battles. You say, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You know, that's what Paul did. That's what David did when he fought Goliath. I'm taking your head off, Goliath. I'm going to beat you. We, we learned last week, we talked about healing, the woman with the issue of blood. She said, I'm going to touch his garment and be healed. And then she touched his garment and was healed. That's the power of words. And when she was healed, Jesus said, daughter, your faith, your faith has made you whole because that's how faith works. And so few Christians understand this is how faith works. You've got to start saying it. And if you've never done this before, if you've never called it the way God calls it, you know, God said to Abraham, you're going to be a father of many nations. Abraham, okay, I'm a father of many nations. That's why I am. I'm a father of many nations. Abraham, you don't even have a single kid. I don't care. God said, therefore I believe it. Well, you're still sick. I don't care. God said I'm healed. I believe I'm healed. If you don't understand that, it's going to seem strange at first saying those things. It is. It's going to seem strange. You know, for the last 30 years, you spoke nothing but doubt, unbelief, failure, defeat. If you've, that's all you've spoken for 30 years. You're going to struggle speaking faith. But keep going at it because it's worth it. It's worth the struggle. It's worth reprogramming your mind. It's worth it. And get to the place where you can speak life and life happens. Where you can speak light into a situation and light happens. Where you can lay hands on the sick and they recover because you speak healing. And you all know. You all know instinctively because we're not stupid. We know if the farmer doesn't plant the seed, he'll never get the harvest. Can you imagine the farmer praying over an empty field that he's never planted in? Oh, please let me have a harvest, Jesus. No, plant the seed and you'll get the harvest. It's the same for us. Say the words and you'll get the harvest. Say I'm fruitful. Say I'm blessed. Say I'm healed. And you'll start to manifest it. You'll start to walk in it. You'll start to get it. You, you, should, you can't just stand there and just throw seed. All, no, start to speak what you want. If that farmer plants nothing and just cr prays, and just reads his Bible, but never says the word, he never sows any seed. That's going to be a poor, hungry, useless farmer. You know what his harvest is going to be? Dandelions, okay? And some of you right now are living a life of dandelions, you're living a life of weeds, because you don't speak the words. You don't have what you say, because you don't say what you want. You don't speak life. The kingdom of God is like a man putting seed in the ground. You've got to say, don't, don't go, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. If there's a mountain in my path, then God wants the mountain in my path. No, you stand up to that mountain and you look that mountain in the eye. And if it doesn't have an eye, you just guess where the eyes are going to be. And you look at that mountain, you say, you listen to me. You sickness, you will get out of my body in Jesus' name. You devil, you'll get out of my family. You strife and envy, you're going to leave my family alone right now in Jesus' name. You poverty are going to get out of my house. I'm going to have the money to do what God's called me to do. It's such a joy. You know, people get annoyed when I talk about money. Oh, you talk about money, you talk about money. You don't understand the power of money. You don't understand. It's a joy. It's a joy. Not just the joy of going through month after month and I'm to worry about, have I got enough money for the month? I've got this, I've got that. It's a joy. Listen, like today, today, this day, okay, I'm just scrolling through my Facebook, having a little look. And I see friends of mine who, who run a, a missionary in Kenya. They need to raise some money for a little girl. And uh, I won't tell you the whole story. It's a horrific story. And they, they want to raise some money for her. And they need 800 pounds. Now, the missionaries out there, they're living out there. And so they've raised about 300 pounds so far. Well, that's nice. They need another 500 pounds. Well, I've got that. I just put that in. Boom, there you go. I don't have to say no. I don't have to check the bank account. I know that money's in the church account. I know the True Life Church give that. We've got the money. We've got the money. That day, when you've got the money, you can help so many people around the world. You can change so many lives. It's such a good feeling. You know, it's awesome. I remember back in the old days, I'll tell you, this happened to me. Going back over 20 years now, I was at a conference. And um, it was actually in Newport, in King's Church in Newport, when Ray Bevan was the pastor. And uh, we were part of the church. This was before we joined the church. We were just at the conference. We'd never been to the church before. And I was getting so inspired by Pastor Ray and the way he talked and the way he dealt with things and the way he did things. It just got me so excited. 
to be with him and just to, to see him. Man, I, you know, I, I, I met a lot of pastors before then, but I kind of never felt I fitted in. But when I met him, I was like, yeah, I could be a pastor. I could, I could do this. And he really inspired me. And uh, anyway, halfway through the conference, one of the guest speakers really felt from the Lord to raise an offering, a personal offering for Ray. And I thought, I want to give him the offering. But I had nothing. I mean, when I say I had nothing, I had nothing. I mean, my wallet was empty. It was cobwebs. I had nothing. My wife and I, we had to pray in tongues to have a piece of fruit. My son had to take a piece of fruit to school. And we didn't even have a piece of fruit. We were that poor. People would think, I was not exaggerating. We were that poor. This is back when they were having baked bean wars and three pence tins of beans. We lived off three pence tins of beans, 17 pence loaves of bread. Man, we lived off that. I got to the stage, I saw beans on toast again, I'd be crying. You know, we, we, we lived like that. I just wanted to put money in that offering. And I was in tears. I sat there crying because I didn't have money to give. And as I was crying, I never said anything. I never told anyone. No one knew who I was. The lady behind me tapped me on the shoulder. I said, yes. You know, like, leave me alone, will you? you know, don't ask me if I'm OK. I'm, I'm just, just let me be. I thought she was going to try and be my counselor for the, the day. I didn't want that. She said, God just told me to give you this. And she gave me 50 pounds, a 50 pound note, and, and a box of chocolates, a box of chocolates. Okay, God, thank you for the 50 pound note and thank you for the box of chocolates. So literally, as I took the 50 pound note in my hand, the bucket came past. And I put the money in the bucket, just as the bucket, it was perfect time. And I was like, God, you gave me something to give. I'm so happy to have been that offering. It just made me so happy. And he gives seed to the sower. If you, if you want to give, he'll give you money to give. I said, like, well, I've got a box of chocolates. I turned to my wife and I said, I'm really glad that money came in. Told her the whole story. I said, I don't know what Amanda said, well, they just looked after our kids so well in, in, in the, the children's ministry. They loved our children so much in the children's ministry. I just wanted to buy a box of chocolates for the children's ministry people. She said, but we've got no money. We've done money money to buy a box of chocolates. I said, I've got a box of chocolates to give to the children's ministry. He gives seed to the sower. It wasn't a week after that. I got promoted. I got a new job. Everything started to turn around. And man, it was awesome. You see, God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. So I'm not being crass talking about money. Money can change your life, you know. And uh, some of you are struggling. You're struggling to pay the bills. You're struggling to keep your house. You're struggling to keep things going right now. You know, God wants to change that. You've got to start speaking some stuff. You know, I know people. And, um, you know, they come and meet me. And they say, what's going wrong? Why is my life not working? And they go, I don't understand. Nothing I do ever works out. Nothing I do, everything I do turns bad. You know, it's like you want to have a... <laughs> You know, it's like planting cucumber seeds in your garden. And then where do all the cucumbers come from? You planted the seed. You're the one going, nothing works out, and then nothing works out. You just had what you said. You just put the word of God to practice. Why don't you start saying, everything I do works out? Why don't you say, everything I do is blessed? I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Why don't you say that? Because that's what you'll get. You'll get what you say. You've got to change your words. You know, the amount of people who come to me and they go, Ben, listen to me, Ben. I, I try reading my Bible. I just don't get it. I just don't understand the Bible. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't like reading my Bible. Why are you saying that? Why don't you say what I say? Every time I open this book, I get something new. Every time I open this book, God speaks to me. This is life and health to all my flesh. This is a lamp to my feet. Say what God says. Start saying it, and that's what you'll get. You've got to start saying it. You know, oh, well, it's flu season. I bet I catch the flu. I bet I catch a cold. I always catch a cold. Every time I go out, I catch a cold. I'm always wanting to catch the cold. Well, stop saying that then. Start saying, I don't catch colds. I don't get colds. I don't get sick. I don't have sick days. God gave you the power to sow seeds with your mouth so you can have some good harvests. Do you want to harvest a healing right now? Start declaring, I'm healed. I receive my healing. I believe I receive my healing. I believe I receive my marriage is healthy. I believe I receive abundance of life. I have peace in my marriage. I have victory in my life. Plant the seed and go to bed and wake up and enjoy the harvest. My harvest is coming. Say it. My harvest is coming. You've got to learn to control your mouth. Listen, if you go to our YouTube page, you'll see our church services. We start with declarations. You pick any of our Sunday morning services, and you can make those declarations with us. You can start speaking life with us and join us. And I'll tell you, it works. The amount of people who come to me with testimonies, and it turns out the testimony is exactly what we just said in that service. It's the declaration we made. One year, about five or six years ago, uh, I was making up our offering declarations. I make them new every year. And uh, I made the last slide. Okay, I make a little two or three panel PowerPoint. And the last slide was, because I've given to the work of the Lord, I sow much and reap much, I drink and am filled, I'm clothed and warm, I eat and have enough, I always have more in my pockets than I think. Now that comes from Haggai 1 verse 5. Now Haggai 1 verse 5 has it the other way, because you didn't give to the work of the Lord, you know, you're hungry and you're cold and you don't have enough stuff and your pockets are, you know, your, your pockets are empty. 
And so I turned it around, so because I have given, I've got this. And I made that the declarations, and people loved those declarations. And people come to me all year, man, I had more in my pockets than I thought, I had more in my bank account than I thought, I had more money than I thought. Man, it's just awesome. Well, the next year, I changed the declarations, so I changed them every year, and I took that last slide out, and there was a mutiny in my church. Everyone was so upset, I took that last slide out. Everyone was, ah, oh, and people got up and started saying it anyway, because I've given to the work, they started saying it anyway, even though I didn't have it in the declarations. So I put it back in, and I've never dared take it out again. And for the last five or six years, whatever we say when we give our offering, we always end it with, because I've given to the work of the Lord, I sow much and reap much, I eat and have enough, I drink and I'm filled, I'm clothed and warm, I always have more in my pockets than I think. And in the amount of people in our church, church that's their testimony through the worst of times through whatever's going on they've got more in their pockets than they think they eat and have enough they get through God is good to them because they say it you can have what you say and so Jesus said you have what you say and you need to say it you need to start planning harder the law that God hardwired at the beginning of the universe is that everything produces after its own kind have you noticed that? Dogs have dogs and cats have cats. They might teach you something different at school, but they're wrong. God's word's right. You know, people make people. Pears make pears. Apples make apples. And when you speak life, when you speak seeds of life, when you speak, I'm going to make it, then that's what you get. When you say, I'm not going to make it, that's what you get. So make a choice. Make a choice. Make a choice. What's the choice? To speak life. Okay, you've got to learn to speak life. A seed is not a seed until it's sown. And the word of God has no power in this book until you speak it, until you sow it in the heart of your life, and then you plant it, okay? You know, I know this, I know that verse is in there. That's not planting it. That's how I know the seeds are in the packet, you know? Oh, I, I know that, I believe it. I accept this as a correct truth. I, I philosophically, fundamentally agree with every truth in the Bible. You still haven't sowed it. You've got to start saying it, you know? Well, I fundamentally agree that by his stripes we're healed. No, say it. By his stripes, I'm healed. Say it. Say it. Say it. You've got to put the word inside you. You've got to develop this in your life. Faith speaks. You've got to start reading the word. Find what you need to declare. Start declaring it, okay? And then someone will always say, well, you won't catch me talking to a tree, to a mountain, to a car. Well, then it won't change. That, that, that's up to you. But if you speak to the mountain, it will move. It will be moved. If you speak to these things, they'll move. So start making some declarations, amen. Man alive, you know, just say, you get out of my life right now. Tell the sickness to get out of your life right now. Tell it to get out of your body. Tell, tell, tell your body to come right. Tell your body to start working. Tell your marriage to start working in Jesus' name. Tell your, you know, Tell yourself, I'm going to get promoted right now in Jesus' name. Start speaking a glorious future over yourself. Start speaking life over yourself. Start speaking freedom over yourself. Start speaking these things, amen? You know, just do it. Just do it. Watch. Give yourself a, a week. Till next week you watch me. And just say, gap every morning, write down 10 things you're going to say about your future, good things, and say them. And see what happens in a week. I guarantee there'll be change. If you want to phone someone and agree with someone, you're going to have the grace to do it, the wisdom to do it. Give us a call. Our guys will pray with you. They'll stand with you. They'll speak blessings over you if you ask them to. Would you just say some blessings over me? All our TV angels can do that, and it'll be awesome. Man, I'll speak a blessing over you right now. You are blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed everywhere you go in the name of Jesus. You will increase. The Lord's face is going to shine on you, and you're going to know God's glory and know God's grace in a fresh and new way in Jesus' name, amen. Remember, whatever happens, God is for you. Good things are going to happen to you this week. Say it yourself. Say, good things are going to happen to me this week. Awesome. They will. They absolutely will. I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for you this week. Have a great week. Amen.